now again okay, see we uh, we say when we are uh, making certain changes in order to uh, like we are adapting the basic data structures or making certain changes in order to solve certain new kind of problems we call them as uh, augmented data structures augmented means some improved data structures or some with some additional properties we have created the data structures so that we are able to solve some new kind of problems or that we are arising uh, see uh, if we see the majority of the problems that we have around us they can be solved using any of the basic data structures the data structures that you have uh, read in the books so they are very good at solving the majority of the problems that exist but still there are certain special kind of problems where we need to uh, you know we uh, if we use these data structures directly they are not efficient so in order to uh, you know uh, solve such an, uh, uh, such kind of problems so these existing data structures they are modified so in such a way that we are able to solve these new kind of problems and uh, we are going to study about these augmented data structures now Now uh, 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 let us see one example, um, the real world problem. Like we say, whenever we have to find, uh, let us if we are uh, passing certain queries. See, these are query efficient. Uh, you can say query driven data structures. That means, whenever we have certain complex queries, like if we want to find out, uh, let's say we have a database where we have we are given the events that have occurred. now i want to know the range of events that means the number of events let us say that occurred between this date to this date right or i want to count uh, have a count of the range of those events right so let uh, let us say the number of events that occurred between 1st feb to 14th feb or what are the events that occurred between 1st feb to 14th feb that means we are talking about uh range so here uh, and the augmented data structures basically they are uh, you know their requirement is uh, majorly in the field of geometry app applications so geometric applications like let us say uh, when you are uh, working on the object detection like the image classification problems what do we do we find out the intersections right whenever you are uh, trying to find the objects uh in the image you are looking for the various kinds of intersections now how to find out uh, can we use the binary uh, you can say uh, binary search tree in order to find out the uh, such kind of intersections from the various kinds of images like you find uh, uh, you want to find out that if we have number of rectangles in the uh the image then what are the common intersection points which are there or what are the certain points which lie within the this particular rectangular box for solving such kind of problems that we are looking for some kind of intersections or we are looking for certain kind of range queries then how to solve such kind of problems can we solve such kind of problems using the binary search tree there is a you can say they are uh, either they are incapable of solving such kind of problems or they are inefficient in solving such kind of problems so in order for handling such kind of problems we have uh, other data structures which are called as the augmented data structures so these augmented da data structures they are basically built on top of the existing data structures only and uh, after uh, you can say after augmentation also we try to retain the properties of the existing data structures so one of the augmented data structures that we are going to study that is called as the interval tree so in the, this interval tree is uh, based on the binary search tree only but now the data in the binary search tree as we saw that when we are working with the binary search tree so we store the data that we have only the keys but now we are talking about storing the range in the uh, nodes rather than just storing the keys so what we have the uh, you can say we have a interval we say interval refers to basically a range so a pair of integers a and b such that a is less than b so whenever we are defining a range we know that there is a uh, range starts from minimum to maximum so a represents the lower value and b represents the higher value so here you can see we can have a interval of 10 to 20 so that means we are trying to focus only the range 10 to 20 
so here you can see for every uh, for every when we specify one range but that particular range will cut the line at the two points so the uh, one point of uh, one point where the line is cut that is the minimum point as the second point is the maximum now when we have to see and within the subtrees see when we are talking when we have to find out the intersections so in that case we may have the multiple uh, uh, you can say so sub intervals of the elementary intervals so here you can say when we are creating the multiple intervals in the in this particular line so here you can see when we have another interval that is 15 and 25 so here again we are going to make the two elementary intervals so here you can say similarly when we are in uh, when we have multiple intervals this is how it's going to look like with the multiple intervals so here we can say given n intervals a i and b i for i is equal to 1 to n exactly how many elementary intervals right are there assuming no intervals the, that no intervals a1 uh, and b i share the endpoints the, so here we can see that none of these intervals that we have seen they are not sharing any of the endpoints so their endpoints are different here you can see the lower endpoints are 10 18 15 and the higher endpoints are 20 22 and 25 and none of these are colliding so in that case we get 2n plus 1 sub intervals when there are n intervals on the integer line that do not share the endpoints so here you can see that uh, uh, let's say if we have certain uh, we have to find out sub uh, sub uh, some intersections so if our interval is 10 20 the sum intervals it spans is 10 15 15 18 and 18 20 and uh, similarly 15 to 20 uh, interval it spans 15 18 18 20 20 22 20 25 and the third one is 18 22 so it spans 18 20 and 20 22 so these are the sub intervals that uh, it is spanning so that can be clearly seen from this particular line now we will see how do we perform the various kinds of uh, now we have interval tree so that means we have a tree where we are not storing the single key values we are storing the range of values so in order to uh, create such kind of interview uh, interval trees how do we uh, you can say what is the process of creation of the like as I said, this is having its roots in the binary search tree. The underlying tree is the binary search tree. So now, how to retain that? We have to retain the property of the binary search tree, and along that with that, we have to create an interval tree which stores the keys. Uh, not the keys, sorry. It stores the range. So in order to for the creation of such kind of interval trees, let us uh, uh, let us work, uh, do one example, which will make it easy for you to understand the problem. So now when we talk about the interval uh, tree, so we maintain the interval so that all the operations in can be done in O log n time. So here you can see, so we don't want to increase the time complexity of any kind of operation over here. So here it's depth is O log n, store space O n, building time is n log of n, and searching time is O log of n plus k, where k is equal to the number of output intervals that we are looking for. Now, since we know interval is represented using the low and the high, so low key is to maintain. So what I will see, how are we going to create the tree? So here we see when we are creating the binary search tree, we will be considering the low value of every range as the key. So that means we will, while creation of the binary search tree, we will ignore the higher value and we will assume that the lower range the value that is there in the lower part that represents the key of that particular range. So on the basis of that particular key, we are going to create the binary search tree. And after that, so what we have to store, uh, the second information that we need to store is the maximum high value in subtree rooted with this node. So we will uh, do this particular, uh, we will learn th uh, this thing through, through an example. So let us uh, uh, assume that we are given this particular information. That means we have the one, two, three, four, five, six ranges. So now when we are given these ranges, how to create a binary search tree? Because we started that binary search, uh, search tree, we, we only have the single, single values. So here for creation of the binary search tree, we will be considering that the lower range value that is 
So here each each range is having L and H. We can assume. So let in the first case L is equal to 15 and H is equal to 20. So in this case, when we start creating the node, so for the interval tree, we will assume that the 15 is the key for this particular range. So we will create a parent node, the root node for that. And now we move on to creating the left and the right child. So in the second, as we move, we, we have another range that is 10, 13. So we know that we have to ignore 30 for creation of the binary search tree, and we have to focus on 10. So that means assuming 10 is the key, and 10 is lesser than the 15, that is the right child, sorry, the parent node. So it becomes the left child of this particular subtree. Then the next range, is, that is 17, 19. And now 17, 19, we know it 17 is greater than. So we are just comparing the lower value with as a key. So that means for creating the interval tree, we have to focus only uh, while creation of the binary search tree, we will be focusing on the lower value of the range. And it is it represents the key of that particular range. So now since 17, 19, we will focus on 17. 17 is greater than 15. So it becomes the right child of the this particular subtree. Now tell me, so uh, I have told you, now tell me what are the other branches where this will go. 520, uh, uh, next we have 520. Yes, please. 520 where it will go? Which sub? Ma'am, left me there. 10. Left me kaise 12 is greater than 10. And the greater value always comes into the right. So this must be the right child of 10. But you need to revise your concepts. See, this is the final tree that we are able to create. That is the interval tree. Right? So the max value of the subtree is missing still we said we there are two things which are being stored in the nodes when we are creating the interval tree one is the range and second one is the maximum value of the subtree so now what is the maximum value of the subtree see this maximum value of the subtree plays a very important role when we are going to do certain operations right so here you see the maximum value of the subtree so when we start from the root or uh, your the leaf node that is 520 the maximum value is 20 and when we go the other side, the maximum value is 15. So for the parent, the maximum value is 30. So the you can say for this subtree, the maximum value becomes 30. And for the right hand side, we see the maximum value is 40. And for the parent also, we say the maximum value is 19, but 40 is greater than 19. So the maximum value of this right subtree, it becomes the 40. So we need to maintain this particular information, as I said, and the final value that we get is for this particular subtree here, you can say from 15, 20 and 30, the maximum value is 30. So we'll, uh, for the left subtree, we are going to maintain this value as the maximum value for the left subtree. And on the right hand side, the maximum value is 40. So we maintain this particular information. And finally, for the parent node, that is 15, 20, the maximum value is well, between the left and child, uh, left and the right subtree, that is 30 and 40 is 40. So now, uh, when we are going to do certain operations, then you will realize that this particular value, the maximum value of the left or the right subtree that we store, that plays a very important role. So uh, uh, we have already studied about this. So another way, see, the different authors have written the different ways of for creating the interval tree. So from here, you can see uh, if we, if you have created, like we created one line of intervals, from that particular point, uh, if you want to create a binary search tree, so in that case, you can see that all the intervals, the values of the lower value of the interval that becomes the par uh, parent node and the left and the right interval they becomes a child node so every point of time here you can see 10 is the parent of left hand child 15 is again a parent and 18 is also a parent so the point of intersection that we see that becomes a node and the other the intervals which are there like the interval between minus infinity to 10 10 to 15 15 to 18 they are becoming the 
child nodes so this is how if we have to create a tree only on the basis of this so you can create a binary search tree using these intervals only directly so these are the two methods you very uh, i have shown you for the creation of the interval tree now the problem that we face when uh, we are working with the interval tree that it uses too much of space. If each interval was very long, it could potentially be stored in every leaf. And since there are n leaves, we may be looking for the O n square storage. So in order to improve this particular storage overhead, what we do? We create a internal node that is called as the span and that is the union of the elementary intervals in its subtree. So now, uh, as you can see that the node 18 spans the interval from 15 to 20. Here you can see 15 to 20 is the no, interval that is being spanned by the node 18. So in that case, span 18 is equal to 15, 20. So that means we are going to maintain this particular value. So which helps in improving that uh, storage for this interval tree. So rather than store an interval in each individual leaf, we will be storing it in the internal nodes. And the rule for uh, performing this storage is that in, in uh, an interval A, B is stored in node X, if and only if span X is completely contained in A and B. So here you can see when this span X is completely stored, uh, contained in this, only then we are going to store this particular uh, span over here. And span parent of X is not completely contained in AB. So when these conditions are met, only then we create a node for this particular span. So this is how we improve the storage for the interval tree. Now we see certain uh, operations on the, uh, what is the time? Okay, so uh, for all the operations for the interval trees, we will be starting tomorrow and I want you to go through the literature, go through the books and come back in the next class after going through these topics. Otherwise, it will become difficult for you to understand these augmented data structures. So go through these data structures through the books or uh, you can see any of the resources which are available uh, with you. And then tomorrow again, I'll be asking, I may be asking you any of the questions from the uh, AVL tree or the, uh, you can say how, how to create the interval. So you should be ready for that.